Now I've switched branches in the code base example for this video that deals with making the class methods a bit more pure in terms of functional programming or pure functions. It makes it a bit easier to test. A lot of times when you're dealing with unit testing, there's a lot of things going on here. There's a couple functions involved, there's a third party component framework, there's a series of predicates and validators running. And so when something breaks, it's a bit challenging to isolate exactly what went wrong, which is kind of the whole point of unit tests. But we're gonna scroll down here and some of these new tests that I've added, Enzyme provides this instance function and actually gets you the class instance that's created for this component, which is fantastic because a normal class has this thing called methods and we can call it. Now, a lot of times class methods don't return any values and only occasionally take inputs. And that's because classes are stateful by their nature. All that state, AKA things that happen afterwards is stored on the class variables, particularly this. So this.props, this.state, this dot on username change. Now, although we've written arrow functions, it converts them to regular functions. So it retains the this, this keyword so you can use it internally in the functions. But you'll notice that we've changed the set state. And I'll explain this in a minute. When you're dealing with pure functions, you want to know what the return value is. This function does take an input for the event when you tab away from the email but it has no return value. I have no idea if the input I gave it makes it happy. I have to look elsewhere. And this is because we know that this function has an intentional side effect. If you wanna make the functions themselves easier to test, not just the component, but the functions, you need to make them a little bit more pure. So this on username blur function up here, what we've done is we've modified it to take an input just like before, but it actually returns a value. So whatever this validation returns, it will return. Now, by default, this state always returns undefined. Thank you, Stephen Sachs. What we need is a set state that says, hey, what I gave you, return what I gave you. And that will allow us to determine if the username errors are existent or not, simply by looking at the function. We don't have to look at a pre-rendered DOM or any of that. We can literally just call a function and see if it returns a value. And the way that works is that you simply make an abstraction over set state to return that value. So if I call set state, I just go ahead and pass it to self. Same, it's probably always going to be this, but it's now going to return what I sent it. So very similar to the identity function of functional programming. If I give you this input, give me it back. But we're actually having a side effect here of the set state. So that's okay, but we need this function to return a value. So now we can do that. Now we could do this manually, but then your code gets pretty verbose. In the sample article I link in the, the YouTube comments, you can see that this gets a lot more verbose. With a simple abstraction, it looks very similar to set state. It just happens to return whatever this is. That's all. It just makes it easier to test. If you're testing pure functions, you have to have an input and an output. And this allows us to get the second part, which is an output. Down here, we have three unit tests that do that. And I want to point out that this testing augments the existing wired up React component testing. You don't just do one or the other. It's really, really good to test does your component work in the React framework, as well as some of the user events that are actually happening. Not all of these things need to happen in functional testing using Puppeteer, or Selenium, or Protractor, things like that. So what we're going to do down here is actually, instead of simulating an event, we're going to call the function directly and just stub the data just like we did up top, stub the data, but we're gonna stub the input and we expect the output to equal undefined if we give it good data. And we expect the output to have an error message for the username errors if we give it a bad input. Same input, same output. Very similar to functional programming, but we're still acknowledging that React component is a class and we're using that and we're not going full functional programming. This is a simple way to do this. So let's go ahead and pass in, I'm gonna put uh, it that only here. And we're going to make this test fail. And you can see it failed because we passed in a bad value and the value we expected back was string. So we're not even looking outside. We're literally looking at just the result that it returns. So very similar to calling functions with an input and an output. Now notice we're still using enzyme to render that component and give us this class, but at least it makes it easier to identify if this function's broken, we can focus on that rather than, okay, where, where in this did it fail? Did it fail on the blurring? Did it fail on the events? Did I mistype something? You know, what, what's going on here? Where here we can do that. There's another thing I wanted to show you that helps with this as well, and that's all about coverage. Coverage is about testing your publics, which sometimes will automatically test your privates. Let's run the NPM test coverage here. It's gonna run a coverage report. Go over to the coverage, and I wanna show you something in the validators down here. So we'll go down to the validators in the coverage report. You'll notice the predicates is almost quite there. It's about 90, 95% overall with the statements and 85 of the branches. 
we've got all the functions covered, but there's one if block that if all blanks for whatever reason doesn't get a string parameter, then it go ahead and returns false because it's not all blanks. We're specifically looking for strings with blanks, not undefined. So the way we can test this specifically is using that targeted way of testing the actual function itself with a variety of inputs. Rather than having to emulate different events, we don't really care about the events. That's another way of getting to those functions to be called by clicking around in a text field. But what I just want to call the function directly and see if the function itself is okay. This has really nothing with has to do with the DOM. This has everything to do with the function itself. Is Not all of these situations are covered. So let's go ahead and pass it undefined. Now when we run the coverage, you can see that we've covered that one edge case. And once it runs through a unit test pass, we can reload, and you can see that it covered coverage for that. It makes it a bit easier to target specific functions, see why they're broken, identify what edge cases you missed when testing. That's why doing pure functions in classes is a bit nicer in a way to augment your existing components.